Few cars scream American muscle car like a Pontiac Trans Am. Debuting in 1969, from 1970 onward, these were a whole different style. And one thing they had in common, all of them, was this shaker hood scoop right here that absolutely did function on the earliest ones up to the Super Duty 455. And the beauty, this one here, you can see 455. This is 1976, the last year full of 455, which is 7.4 liters to you and me. And uh, good power, I mean, quite detuned, but again, with that shaker hood jiggling like that, you're gonna get a date on Friday night for sure. But the beauty of these things is there's not much on these things that's simulated. The arrow effects on these things, the, the, the wheel skirts and stuff, that absolutely function. And on the front fenders, the heat extractors, the air extractors, these things right here, are absolutely vented into the engine bay so that at high speeds, these things would allow air to come out and reduce the amount of front end lift, which could happen at 200 miles an hour. Not that these ones would go to 200 miles an hour. Now, this one's a great example with aftermarket wheels. But here's the thing, these things sold really well, especially in the 70s when smog and fuel efficiency were the keywords. Pontiac sold the hell out of these things. But how did it end in 1980 and 81 with something called the Turbo Trans Am? What is that? Let's go look. From 1976 through 1980, it was just four short years, and the Trans Am remained popular, although it did change with the times. The things that weren't changed were this cool aero equipment down here, this, the skirts down here for aerodynamics, the vented front fenders, which was a Trans Am touch going all the way back to 1970, still alive and well. But one thing we don't see anymore in 19, 1980 or 81 is the shaker hood. And something new is this thing, turbo 4.9, 455, no more, none of that. 1980 and 81, basically the turbocharger took the place of cubic inch displacement. And the thing of it is, the cafe regulations and fuel economy, all that crazy stuff was really killing the muscle car. These things still sold. You could get this with a four barrel carburetor if you wanted a Chevy in California, 305, or the Pontiac 301 in other states. So this here is a turbo Trans Am. It's a limited edition Indy pace car. You gotta love that silver and white paint right there. And, and on the back side of the hood scoop right there, the hood bulge, it says turbocharged, normal, medium, and high. They used to call this the turbo meltdown gauge. Like car and drivers, they laughed at these things, and they were fairly popular and very, fairly potent, but they did have no balls. 200 horsepower was about as good as it got, which uh, was you know, reasonable, but for 1980 and 81, the, the years of simulation, it wasn't very good, and especially with something wearing the Trans Am name. It was a grave disappointment to hardcore purists like me. Let's open the hood and take a look at that hair dryer that's bolted on top of this 301. Like any self-respecting Trans Am, it does have the Phoenix Rising graphic. Don't call it the Screaming Chicken, it's not that, it's the Phoenix Rising. The guys at Pontiac would crucify us for saying this is a Screaming Chicken, but what's not screaming is the engine under the hood, and here it is, the 4.9 liter, 301 cubic inch Pontiac V8. Now look at all the plumbing on that thing. Basically, it's a very light duty engine. The, the crankshaft and the block are both made smaller than a, uh, an earlier 301. These are basically children of the emissions era and the economy era. But here it is right here. That's the turbocharger right there, air research turbo unit right there, which takes its orders from the exhaust gases passing through the cylinder combustion pressures. And there's a wastegate right there which is there to uh, moderate. I think these made eight or nine pounds of boost max. Horsepower, 200, not a lot. Probably about the same as a 455 from 1976, which was net rated at 200 and something horsepower. It was kind of a dud. But with that said, at least these had a little bit of torque. 310 foot-pounds, I believe it was, when these things were brand new. But uh, here it is right here. On the other side of the hood, to, to counter that exhaust temperature right here, because that's right over the turbo, the turbine housing right there. This piece of metal right here, not seen on non-turbo Trans Ams, that basically reflects heat away from the paint and the Phoenix Rising. It's not a screaming chicken, folks. But basically, here it is, a very busy engine compartment but it was what was needed and Pontiac sold the heck out of these things you could get the uh, top the turbo 301 and the Pontiac formula Firebird formula and of course the Trans Am and special editions like this one right here this was about the most expensive Pontiac Firebird you could buy in 1980 or 81 kind of a special car but of course with this more go power they need to be more wool power and one place where the Trans Am absolutely rose to the uh, task was right here on the door handles, we can see something here, a brag tag for four-wheel disc brakes. I believe these arrived in 1980 and 81 and were available on Trans Ams in 82 onward. And basically, four-wheel disc brakes were sort of a European thing at this point in time. In the earlier days of the uh, 455 Trans Ams, none had four-wheel disc brakes, just front discs. But here we have them right back here. 
disc brakes in the back of these turbine style wheels right here. Goodyear polysteel radials. And a great looking car in many ways, but don't look for a whole, a whole lot of tire smoke coming out of these rear tires because these were three strikes, no balls. At the back of the car, we also see the duct, the tail spoiler right here, the duct tail, which was a, a Trans Am must have, you know, Tony Minero at uh, on uh, Saturday Night Fever, Friday Night Fever, whatever it was, Friday Night Raw. This right here was a major Trans Am styling cue, and you wouldn't be without a Trans Am without this device right here. But the shaker hood would be gone and uh, replaced by the, uh, the screaming of the, the Phoenix Rising and the turbocharger whining away to maybe 5, 10 pounds of boost. Not an animal. And of course, 1982, a whole new generation of Firebirds and Camaros arrived, the F-bodies, smaller, lighter cars. And it's still, they had 301s, no turbos in those. They were all naturally aspirated, unfortunately. And the 455 never reappeared in the, in the Gen 3 Firebirds, like the 82 up. They, they would have been great with a 455, but again, the, uh, the environmental regulations were such that no 455s in any Firebirds after 1976. So here we have it, the beginning and the end of Fire, Firebird Trans Am performance. You choose which one you like better.